where's my big boy? Ooh, there's my big boy. I got your big hairy belly. I got you. Oh, hey, welcome to No Two Gays About It. I uh, bet you thought I was talking to my husband. Nope. I was talking to Jack, my cat. This season, it's all about relationships, and today we are going to discuss the very important and deep relationship that many gay men over 50 have, the relationship with our pets. Hello, I'm Tom Burke, a very proud pet parent. And I'm Michael Foley. (laughs) Kitty. Hello, Hello. Michael Foley. What's happening with you, Michael? Other than being horrified slightly, um, you know, not much, just... Summer's been crazy busy for me and um, kind of enjoying it and riding the wave and just kind of having a blast. Um, What about you? What's going on in your world? You know, same thing. The end of summer, it's been great. Um, Although to keep on topic, the last 15 minutes, I have been spending with Jack, my cat, who happens to be a long-haired rag doll, and any pet parent out there who has a long-haired animal understands what happens when your long-haired animal has some bathroom issues. It's so disgusting to have to clean those animals up. And yet, we do it, because that's what being a pet parent is all about. Well, having changed a bazillion shitty diapers in my life, I can totally relate, but I haven't had a pet. I haven't Mm. had a pet, honestly, since I've lived in LA um, and Palm Springs, since I left the East Coast. So, um, cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about these relationships that gay men over 50 have with their pets. Before we actually have a little discussion here, I just want to go over a couple uh, statistics that I found, um, which are kind of great. Seven out of 10 LGBTQ adults own pets. That's a lot. Seven out of 10, don't you think? That's a huge amount. 63% of heterosexual adults have pets. So more gays and lesbians uh, and TQ pluses have more pets than heterosexuals. Uh, This was something else. 90% of gay pet owners say that their pet is a member of their family. Uh, Duh. Like, yeah, of course. (laughs) Don't roll your eyes at me, Mr. Foley. I'm going to get so much hate coming at me from this episode, but... What are you going to do? So here, just a few more stats here. 63% of the LGBTQ um, pet owners own a cat, as opposed to 52% of heterosexuals who own cats. Kind of funny. Um, However, straight people own more dogs than gay people do. 71% of straight uh, pet owners own a dog, and 60 Two uh, percent of LGBTQ pet owners have a dog. Crazy, right? Uh, yeah, um, it kind of makes sense to me, though, honestly. Um, so here's a question for you yes. uh, about the breakdown, because you are a single man and you are out there meeting more single people than I am, um, mainly because no one wants to meet me. But who do you see out there in the world owning more pets? Gay men over fifty who are single. Or gay men over 50 who are partnered? What do you think about that? That is a very... Well, no, it's actually not. I I think more couples I know own pets than single folk. And, I mean, I could give you what I think are the reasons for that. Um, Because, as with children, um, pets require a lot of attention. And to have two people caring for it like if one's working during the day or just traveling um and i know this couple that this happens to often one is out of town so the other one becomes the you know he always says i'm a single mom with two with two dogs um while his husband's out of town and you know the 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 balance shifts there so when the other one comes back into town he's like i'm taking a little break from the the monsters and they're yours for a couple of days so I think there's that tag team thing that happens um, with couples that if you're single, 
the onus is completely on you. And dogs especially require so much attention that, um, you know, you really do have to plan your schedule around them. Okay, well, um, I'm going to not agree with you on a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) First of all, uh, I... We have had, you know, Scott and I have been together for 35 years. We've had a lot of pets in that 35-year span, um, including one cat that was 21, one cat that was 20. I mean, we've had, I think it's seven or eight pets uh, in that time period. Dogs are not easier than cats. I'm sorry. Cats are so, (laughs) have, just need a lot, a lot. I mean, cats are more Um, difficult than dogs. Well, not that they're more difficult. They just require, like people, a lot of people think, oh, cats are so easy. No, they are not. They demand just as much attention. Oh, absolutely. But if you you need to go out of the house for, let's say, six or seven hours, the cat is pretty capable of taking care of itself for that time. Or a dog, you know, they're sitting there with their legs crossed or they might have an accident. Okay, I yeah. agree with that. But later, we're going to be talking about all the ridiculous things that gay men over 50 do with their pets. And I am going to be lumped in that group because if I'm going out for a full day, I'm having a babysitter stay with, you know, my animals just because. Um, but the other thing that you said uh, that, yes, I agree that more couples have pets, at least in my world, it seems like. Most couples have pets, gay couples, but the onus is usually on one of us. And I just said one of us, meaning you. me. Yeah. I'm the one who does everything. <laughs> um. <laughs> yes, I, 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 being being an uncle um, uh-huh. of a cat, long haired cat, I, I have seen that happen. Where it's definitely right. it's definitely your that's your wheelhouse. Well, and it, it's not so much that I've chosen this, but, you know, um, I, I'm i like the mom, and it's got the pail that gets to play around, and I'm the one who has to do all the, you know, but that's been true all the way along, you know, we've had dogs, we've had cats, so anyway, um, but I also see that in my couple friends, that there's usually the one who is the one who's doing all of the stuff. And, you know, I cannot wait. I'm going out of town in a couple of weeks and I cannot wait because I'm going solo. Um, just so Scott sees what I go through. Yes. And I, I plan on doing wellness you know? checks during that period that you're out of town. So <laughs> Thank you rest secure that. knowing that he, he will not be alone. <laughs> Great, thanks. So, um, all right, so let's get back to this whole thing about the relationship that gay men have with their pets. And the first question that we have to answer is, you know, why? Why do so many gay men, especially over 50, have pets? Do you have any thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. Okay. I think it's companionship. Definitely. Um, There's... It's interesting. I had a conversation with a single friend of mine. Um, We had dinner on Saturday and I hadn't seen him in like 25 years. Um, Who has, who said to me, my dog is my life now. I don't even date Um, because it provides him with a level of intimacy that's safe. And of course my response to him, is that really good for you? Um, And he was like, well, I just don't have to deal with people. And I was like, again, I said, so is that really good for you? Yeah. <laughs> you know? I'm not sure about so that, right? I, for some people, not at all. I have noticed it is definitely an avoidance of people um, where they, they replace whatever relationship it is that they might have with a human being and they put it onto this pet and it becomes their world, which is more than okay, but it does seem to maybe rob that person of something a little deeper with another human being. Oh, definitely. But then I also think that pets open you up to a whole new world as well, especially dogs, because you have to take that dog out. You take them to a dog park. You get to meet other dogs, dog parents. You know, um, I don't know. You don't have a dog, but I know a lot of guys use their dogs for dating apps you know like they walk around and so people will come up and talk to a dog quicker than they will talk to a absolutely it's a it's an easy that connection yeah it's an easy icebreaker it's a very social 
sort of in, I think, for a lot yeah, of people. Exactly. Where you're right, people are going, "Oh, my dog! Your dog is so cute!" And then other things happen from that. So, um, right, it is great for that. I think also having a pet gets you out of your head. It's not all about you, totally. you know. And a lot of people need that. Where, especially those of us gay men over 50 as we're aging and aging and aging you know the older you get the less you really want to do you just want to stay in your house you're not feeling well whatever but if you have a little little animal that re relies on you that you know it's your responsibility you have to get up doesn't matter how bad your back hurts it doesn't matter how crunchy your knees are as you're right. walking you have to get up. You have to take care of this animal. And it kind of gets you out of your head in a way. Uh, you have responsibilities. You know, whatever it is you have to do for this other being. Um, so I think that helps a lot in getting out of your head and not just being all about me, 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 and poor me, poor me. Wait a minute. I got to get my dog out. Let's take him to a dog park. Oh, I got to meet some right. new people and just talk to somebody today. Or just get out of the and house that's... because, you know, if, when you take your dog for a walk, it, it changes the chemical balance in your head. You know, your endorphins sure. start to fire and you're outside and you're doing things. And um, yeah, it, there is, you know, there's a bazillion studies out there that talk about the health benefits of having a pet. Sure. And I read a number of uh, studies just on that same thing for men over 50, gay men over 50. One, uh, one thing that I was reading a lot, um, and I know you and I both see this a lot, um, men of our age and older didn't really have the opportunity to have children, whereas, you know, the younger queer community are, are more open to adopting or having surrogates or, you know, having children. Um, a lot of men our age and older treat their animals as their, and I do not like this term, Just it's just a personal thing, fur babies, uh. um, that these are their babies. This, this is their way of being paternal um, or maternal, um, which is not a bad thing, you know. Absolutely um, not. It is, it is not, not a bad at thing. Any, any time anybody is capable of giving more love to anything, out there right it's a really good thing but then there's that line where it crosses into craziness some, i was going to say <laughs> dysfunction but let's go with crazy <laughs> <laughs> and believe me when we start talking about the craziness i'm one of those guys i mean i i, I there are some lines you know i i'm not yeah there are some lines that i'm not crossing but i i do you know have to throw myself into that a little bit crazy with your animal guy. Well, yeah, because, um, you know, growing up, I raised quails and ducks and chickens and rabbits, and I always had a cat. And I had two that were by, my, they they were like dogs. And that's what I don't, I, people who aren't cat people, I always say to them, you've never had a cat. Because you would right. be. Because they're like dogs, would never leave my side. As soon as I got into bed at night, they were on my chest, paws up here, and would go to sleep with me. And at some point during the night, obviously, I, I always felt like they were doing that to make sure I was safe. And when I fell asleep, you know, obviously they leave you at some point in the night. Um, and there was always something comforting about that because it, it, it was always like, I got you. I'm here with you. And um, yeah, I always loved that. And I, I do miss it, but I also feel like apartment life isn't good for, for me. I don't feel sure. it's, a, it's a fair shake for um, an animal. So now in your dating life, do you like it falling asleep with men with their hands around your neck? <laughs> around my neck, no, but I do love falling asleep with somebody's head on my chest. So okay. there is that same same thing. I, 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 I am like, a cuddler. I gotcha. I'm a cuddler. Uh, I'm okay. a cuddler. Okay, good. What can I say? Good for you. Um, another really good positive aspect of having a pet is self-care. You know, that... Animals are so freaking amazing because they just give us this unconditional love. No matter what we do, it's okay. No matter how horrible we look or how fat we are or how whatever, whatever, they don't give a shit. They're like, yeah, you're my person. I love you. You're great. You know, and especially with, you know, lives, our lives are all crazy and busy and we have so much going on to just 
hear that or feel that from something, some little being is just amazing, yeah. you know, um, in our in our daily life. So self care is definitely a big part of why uh, I believe why a lot of gay men over fifty have their pets um, because again we're not hearing that. A lot out there in the world. You're great. You're wonderful, yeah. no matter what. And the, yeah, you're, that's, you're, you're right. Because having a pet makes you feel valued because there is something there that depends solely on you for its well-being. Yeah. And there is, there is a definite... Eh, ego boost may be the wrong term, but that's all I got right now. Um, where it does make you feel needed on a level that, you know, not having a pet, you, you, you don't if you're single or, you know... And it, it, yeah, it just brings it to a different level, knowing that something depends you know, on you completely. No kidding, right? Um, on that same line, I found this great quote from, um, you might know this guy, these guys, the, the old gays on YouTube. You know yeah, who they are, right? They're yeah. also out here in Palm Springs. <clears throat> um, they are far older than we are, of course. But um, <laughs> this is a quote from Robert, one of the old gays. Um, and it's about his very first rescue dog, which he got when he was older than we are. He said, I was living by myself, and when I brought her into the house, she was the only other person here with me. She was excellent for me because I was expecting to die within a short period of time, and I think her spirit coming into my life may have saved my life. She was my lifesaver. Because she gave him a purpose. Absolutely. She gave him a reason why he needed to get up and take care of himself. Because um, like you said earlier, so, yeah. it gets you out of yourself. Right. There's a level of selfishness that you can't really abide by anymore when you have a, a pet. You know, yeah. that, again, yeah. something depends on you and it's, it's, it needs to eat. It needs to drink. It needs to go out. It needs to be cared for. So um, it definitely is. Yeah. Huge. I think, especially, like you said, as we get older, that uh, there is a companionship um, that it, it provides for you. Right. But there are also, you know, some challenges of owning a pet, which is why a lot of men our age and older don't want to take that responsibility on. You know, one of the biggest challenges of owning a pet is the cost. It's really expensive to have a pet. And it's not just food or litter or toys. You know, there are the vet mm -hmm. bills. And, you know, we uh, just a little while ago, we lost another one of our cats. And sweetest, sweetest cat we've ever had. Uh, sweetest pet we've ever had. Um, but he was our special needs kitty. Uh, he had so many uh, physical problems um and he was so expensive but you know i would have i would have sold a kidney if yeah. i had to you know if i couldn't take care of this little guy um but i understand that that's a huge deterrent to a lot of people is the cost also you know i don't know about where you live um but if you're renting a lot of places don't allow pets does your apartment allow pets do you know yeah in fact when i was looking for a place here i th every place i looked and maybe it's because of the demographic that lives here um, every place I looked allowed pets. Great. Uh, and you're right. It's the demographic, as we just said, it, how many, you know, gay people have pets. It's very important to, especially the gay men over yeah. 50 and who lives out here in Palm Springs. It's that gay man over 50. So fantastic. Um, another big thick deterrent or challenge of owning a pet is allergies. A lot of people have allergies. You have allergies, right? Yes. Uh, you and I have a really great friend who has allergies, um, but he would always pop a pill before he came to our house, and he was on the floor yeah. playing with our animals because he loved them so much. He just, you know, couldn't have one because of his allergies. But um, and another thing for this overgay male demographic, it's time. You know, um, our lives are very busy. A lot of people are still working. Social life is crazy. And people, you know, as they're aging or retiring, they want to travel. They want to go experience things. You can't really just up and go yeah. if you have a pet. 
you know, you have to really, like I said, we need babysitters. If we're going to be leaving, we need someone to stay at our house and stay with our animals, make sure that they're taken care of the way that we want. But then that's another added expense. So yeah, my friend who refers to himself as the single mom when his husband's out of town, um, has a doggy daycare that a bench, like depending on how long his husband's out of town, he needs a break. So he'll bring them to doggy yeah. daycare and let them stay there overnight. And it's a hundred dollars a dog. He has two dogs. It's 200 bucks for a night. Right. Which is, is crazy how expensive things it's have crazy. gotten. And I, my friend Paul has two dogs and he does online vet stuff, but they still charge him $300 a pop for 10 minutes online, which yeah. is insane. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's expensive. Yeah. Um, another really challenge of owning a pet is the loss and, and the passing of a pet, you know, it's probably the most difficult thing anyone has to go through, but it's totally worth it. You know, we bring them into our lives. We have so much else going on in our lives every day. We have all this stuff and friends and places we're going and whatever, but our pets, we are their entire life. So we owe it to them to bring them in and, and escort them out, you know, in a really loving way. But I understand that that's a really difficult thing. My husband cannot be a part of that, um, you know, which I understand. But then I'm also like, oh, my God. Yeah, then you got to you you go through it alone. Um, yeah. yeah um, but it, it's a reason why some people just cannot take the plunge. Also, you know, in in thinking about having a pet as an older gay male, you know, you have to kind of figure out timing as well. You know, okay, a uh, cat can live over 20 years. How old am I? Who's going to take care of this guy if I leave? You know, that's why a lot, like with the older gay, that we, the quote I read, he got a rescue pet. Um, there are so many older animals that need homes. Uh, it's a great way to go. So instead of going like, oh, I, I'm not going to live long enough. Um, well, I, ha- you know. I have two friends out here who, you know, are very well off and their pets have a place in their will. And there's a stipend that whoever is going to be caring for that pet oh. <laughs> after they're gone yeah. gets on a monthly basis to take care of food, to take care of its medical costs, to take care of all that stuff. So it's, it, it is interesting, you know, for a lot of people, it oh is my like God. having a child and they're making sure that yeah. it's cared for after they're, they are gone. We've been through that. And Scott's like, all right, well, whoever gets the cat gets the house. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> sure. Um, no, that's, it's definitely something that you need to think about. But, you know, another challenge for people to have a pet, some people just are not pet people. Yeah, it's know? like some people aren't kids people. Um, you know, everybody has that. Right. Because it is a huge responsibility and you have to give up a lot. And, um, you know, what the payoff is, is if you've never had a pet is, you know, so much more than you have to give up. But I can understand why people steer away from it. Yeah, no, I I understand with all of these reasons, and there are plenty of other reasons. Some things that I don't really quite get are those people who are like, oh, I just hate pets. I just hate animals. Like, um, I'm not sure I'm going to trust you as a human being then. You know? Like, um, okay. I also think that I had pets growing up, as you did, and you really learn about responsibility, and you learn about loss. I mean, that's something that a child has to go through as well kind of setting you up for life because there's a lot of loss Without a in doubt. life. Yeah. When my, when my stymies died, who had been, he was 14 years old. Um, and I had had from the time I was four, um, it devastated me. Sure. Um, that was one, you know, one of the ones who slept on my chest at night. Um, and as hard as it was and as devastating as it was, I was so grateful for that experience because it did open me up in a way that, Especially right. in the environment I grew up in, you know, he, he was in a lot of ways my safe harbor. It was, there was unconditional love. Right. And that was the only place it came from. So, um, yeah, I, it, it was devastating, but it also makes you a richer person, you know, oh, in agreed. the long run. Yeah. Agreed. All right. So let's now 
move a little, get a little happier at this moment. <laughs> uh, let's talk about some of the things that gay men over 50 do that is that are just absolutely ridiculous. Um, and you know who you are out there. Um, what are some of the things you see? Um, <laughs> this is where I'm going to get the hate mail. Um, That's okay. I hate it when people dress up their pets. Yes, right? That is what is so that? self-indulgent and wrong because anytime you ever put anything on it, its first instinct is get this shit off me. So you right. have to know it's not comfortable. It's just not. Yeah. You know, I, that makes me nuts. I agree. I do they do they really want to be dressed up like that? No. You know, it, I I don't think so. I, people are going to argue and say yes that their animals do or their tiny little dogs have to have sweaters on because they're so cold. Okay, whatever. But I remember being um in, in New York. I was just in New York working and I was came out of my friend's apartment. I was it was on Park Avenue at 72nd. And I came out and I had the doorman get, you know, was going to get me a cab. And as he was doing that, this man walks out who was probably 40. But, you know, I'm in my 20s and I thought this was like this really incredibly old gay guy just came out. You know, you could definitely tell he was gay by the way he was dressed. Holding this little white thing who had this sweater on and booties. And it wasn't raining. It wasn't cold. It wasn't hot whatever. So he puts the dog down and I was mesmerized by this guy. (laughs) He puts the dog down and he says, winky tink for daddy. Uh, uh, And I was like, "Uh." I waited and he said, poof, poof, winky tink for daddy. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to be that guy. I just can't. It was ridiculous to me that, you know, first of all, calling your dog poof, poof, Um, And then Winky Tink for Dead. I know we all talk to our cats or our animals differently. It's baby. We all have that. baby talk, right? Yeah. Everybody has that animal, you know, sound for, and you have to talk differently to your different animals because they're just, you know, different people. So, you know, yeah. Like in the beginning of this, where I was like, where's my big boy? That's how I talked to Jack because Jack's like this guy. He's just like the guy cat, you know? Um, But if you ever hear me say winky ting for daddy, just slap me upside down. Well, I'm going to do more case, than that. Would you? There's okay, going to be good. a pillow over your face. <laughs> good. Um, yeah. Another thing that absolutely just bothers me is um, when you see someone walking their animal in a stroller, and it's usually like a pink stroller, and you're just like, did he really need to come to this wherever we are mall or fair or, you know, do you have to walk? Like, I understand some animals are older and can't walk anymore and, you know, okay. But the pink stroller and like, can we just walking... say any color stroller? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All if, right. if your dog is not indigent and, or you're, you know, it, it is capable of walking on its own. It should not be in a stroller. I'm sorry. That's just yeah. a little, a little excessive. It's a little crazy. And again, it's yeah. it's okay. So my theory is with the what was what did that guy say to his dog? Poof poof, poof poof. 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 Winky tink for daddy. And the folks <laughs> who you know, there's it brings it to a different level where they crave the attention from outside. Um, yeah. And it becomes less about their pet and more about them. And I always, I've, I've referred to that for a very long time as, oh, they wear their dog as a brooch. It's a conversation piece. Um, and again, like okay. I said, I'm going to get some hate shit for this. <laughs> I know, okay. but I just reevaluate those situations. Well, okay. I mean, and again, I am... I am at fault for a lot of, you know, fur baby daddy crap. If you come into my home, everything's about our animals. The house is run by the end. Although, you know, it doesn't look like that. Um, cause sometimes you walk into homes and it's just like you're hit with puffs of hair and the smell of the animal. And that's a little. Yeah. Mm, yeah let's. You should never be still... able to smell a litter box. Yeah. Or a dog bed. 
But that's just me. And what you know the right. commercial where people get nose blind? Is that what they call it? It's like okay, for Glade Air Freshener or something like that, yeah. where they just get used okay. to it and they don't they can't smell it anymore. Right. Um so I think that's what happens. It's like people who are too much cologne. They just don't realize right. it. So but anything else bug you about some gay men over fifty and their animals? Uh, yes. A dog does not belong in a bar where there is loud music and crowds. It just doesn't. Okay, seriously, guys are bringing their oh, dogs to and bars? again, it is, it is solely for the attention. You see it when it happens. And wow. there are so many of them that don't care about the well-being of the dog because they'll let it wander on the extend leash in a place where somebody <laughs> could step on it. Sure. Oh, so these are little Some dogs. Some of them are little. Like it's dogs. rare that somebody okay. walks into a bar with a large dog, but if maybe about a month ago, somebody came into a musical bingle with a fucking Great Dane. Why? And oh. as a child, we had a Great Dane. They're kind of skittish dogs and a little bit neurotic. That Great Dane doesn't belong in an environment like that. That is, to me, right. animal abuse. And anytime I see somebody walk into a bar, again, really loud music, lots of people who aren't expecting an animal in the environment, so they're not paying attention to what's on the floor, unless it's a drunk and you're stepping over it, <laughs> which is a little <laughs> larger, so you could see that coming. Um, it's just, it's cruel. I, I, I don't understand that mentality. Well, yes, I do, because like I said, it's, a, it's, a, it's an attention grab. But the dog don't want to be there, and you could see it all the time. And there is a difference, yeah. let me make this really clear, between a service animal, because I've worked with service animals, um, because I used to volunteer with children who were HIV positive or had full-blown AIDS, and they used service animals um, in the part of their therapy. Those animals behave very differently because they are trained to. Um, so you could, at least I can spot a service animal from a mile away because of the way they behave. Okay. Can we just talk about that service animal thing? Yeah. Is everyone bringing their dogs everywhere now? Like every grocery yeah. store you go into and it, it doesn't matter anymore because you know who started this shit? Anybody and it's another reason reality television will be the downfall of the American society it was Paris Hilton. When she started walking around with that little dog in her purse and then yeah. Everybody found the freedom to do the same thing. That's okay. just my take on it. Yeah. <laughs> that she's you take she that is take. the one who started this shit with bringing your dog Damn everywhere. You Paris. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she definitely has one of those winky tink for daddy <laughs> little dogs. Um, cool. All right. Anything else up your craw about uh, gay men and their dogs? No, I think those are, you know, the okay. carriage, the dressing, and. Don't bring your dog someplace like a bar, please. It, that it doesn't or even belong. a supermarket. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, it doesn't belong in a supermarket. It doesn't want to go shopping with, with you, right? I mean, there are a lot of um, people, gay men, uh, especially out here in Palm Springs, who bring their animals everywhere they go. You know, like if you're having a party. Oh, can we bring you know Muffy and Tuffy? No. It's like no. Sorry. Oh, and I got to add restaurants they... to that list to also. Because there are Same people thing, with right? allergies, me being one of them. And if there's a dog sitting next to me, guess what? Right. It's an issue. And it was like people who used to smoke wherever they felt like it and didn't take the right. well-being of anybody else into consideration. And there are people who are deathly afraid of dogs. So, you right. know, have some compassion and consideration for other people on the planet. And your dog really doesn't want to be in a restaurant either. Uh, I could say no, that I'm pretty... Kidding. I like, could say that with almost certainty that um i mean if if it's out, an outdoor cafe okay totally that's different, totally different absolutely right but yeah. inside a restaurant no, no. You, you do not need to bring your and then they start barking because or... actually i this nope. situation happened maybe three or four months ago where and it was you know it was a little cooler here in palm Springs, so everybody was eating inside somebody brought a dog in and it started barking and it wouldn't stop. And it became very uncomfortable wow. for everybody in the neighborhood to the point where the manager finally had to say, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And then the guy got all pissy. 
And I'm like, you are 100% in the wrong. Why are you getting right. pissy? First of all, people tolerated you far longer than they should have. Um, cause I'm sorry. It's yeah. like if a kid is crying, I raised younger siblings. My sister had a habit of throwing tantrums in restaurants. I got up from the table. I picked her up and we walked outside until she was able to compose herself. We talked through whatever it was the issue was, and she was calm and we went back in the restaurant. You know why? Because I didn't want to disturb other people's... Right. Yeah, when we were growing up, like, our parents didn't even go out with us. Be like, take you out to the car, leave you there, and go back and eat. You know? <laughs> with the windows rolled it's not up. like... Exactly. <laughs> not like it no. is today, you know. <laughs> That's funny. So just to kind of wrap this this part of our conversation up, I found another really great quote um, that I want to read to everybody. So here goes. For the LGBTQ plus community, having a pet gives us a source of love, companionship, belonging, and purpose. Pets make our day and give us a reason to see the next one. Pet parenting isn't easy, and neither is being queer or trans. In our minds and in our hearts, it's all worth it to take pride in pet parenting. Lovely. Aww. Yeah. Absolutely. And I do take pride in being a, a good pet parent. Um, not, a, not as crazy as some of those parents out there. Um, and never a winky tink for daddy kind of pet parent. But... It's a winky tink for mommy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, depends on what I'm wearing. Um, all right. So next, it's now time for my absolute segment, favorite segment of our program, and that is the Savage Side Eye. This is something everyone is going to be able to relate. I don't know exactly who I'm throwing my side eye to, but it's to anyone who had anything to do with any... Anything to do with having this play over and over and over on television and ruining our television experiences, it is that commercial with the Sarah McLaughlin soundtrack <gasps> where the animals are sad and in cages and every time it comes on, you're like, oh my God, turn the channel, turn it quick, quick, and you can't get it quick enough. And then like, who's got the remote? And then you change the channel and then you wait what seems like 15 minutes it is. and then you yeah and then you go back and it's still <laughs> going on and it's always at that one shot of that one animal and you're like fuck you sarah mclaughlin and you're whoever you are i don't even know what the commercial's for it's for, it's it's just, for the aspca okay well then come on you would Stop pissing us off. That's who's getting my side eye, because I hate that commercial. It ruins everything. And like you said, people uh, turn it off. Nobody's watching yeah, that. That's, and ha, have I've a, seen it for... Yeah, I, have a happy moment where people are adopting a pet, and you see kids, and you see families exactly, like embracing these exactly, animals. Show the joy right? that's related to animal adoption. And how about this? It's, this commercial has been playing for, what, 27 oh God, years, probably? And I didn't even know who it was for. Wow. Yeah, like, so you changed is it the really channel. Work yeah. yeah. Is it really working for you guys? Or is it just pissing everybody off? And poor Sarah McLaughlin. I mean, every time I hear that song, I'm like, oh. I th I mean, she probably didn't expect it to run as long as it has. And again, wow. it's on for like five minutes at least. But if she's making money... I'm you know, thinking she donated the proceeds Sarah. to. The, oh, yeah. yeah. She, usually, you know, with you public go. service announcements, they give up their time freely. All right. Well, whoever it is, I'm throwing you that I side. I like that eye. one. Thank you very much. Um, all right. So, hey, everyone out there who's listening, and we want to thank everybody. We have the greatest listeners out there who send us very lovely messages. Although this week, if you're going to send negative messages <laughs> about Michael, please have them just. Go directly to Michael, because um, I, too, am one of your crazy pet parents out there. But we would love to hear all about you and your pets or whatever thoughts you'd like to share with us. Like I said earlier, our entire season is about relationships. Any sort of relationships that you'd like us to talk about, please, you know, let us know. So, Michael, how can people get in touch with people us? People can hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok under the moniker No Two Gays About It. And that's the number two. 
So no, the number two gays about it. Um, and we really do want to hear from you. You could also shoot us emails at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And again, that's the number two. Um, and if you want to be a part of our family in a different way and help support us and help keep the show going, um, however you can, uh, you could hit us up on Patreon at no two gays about it. So that's Patreon forward slash no two gays about it and become part of our family in a different way. Yeah, we are so grateful for all of you out there for joining our conversation. And as Michael said, being part of our family, because those of us gay men over 50, we need to build our families out there. And we really respect and, uh, you know, love all of you that are. Yeah, oh, let, me, so, let me just say really yeah. quickly, please like and subscribe because it definitely helps us out in a huge way. Um, and yes. again, you can find us on YouTube but No Two Gays About It. And yes, please like, subscribe. We need you. Um, awesome. So fantastic, uh, Uncle Michael. Uncle. So Samaya I'm getting in the house. Is that what I heard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because you're the one who's going to get up at 4 a.m. to feed my. I go to bed at 4 a.m. So if you think that's an issue, it's not. So okay. there you go. But then he also eats at 5 and at 7 and at 10. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, all right, so I need to go and winky ting for daddy. So um, until next time, Michael, thank you very much. Until next time, thank you, Tom, and thank you guys so much for listening. It's been great. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to explore the various and varied relationships of those of us gay men over 50, click like and subscribe so you too can join our conversation. 